Welcome everybody to another Impossible Shot and this time we're going to look at how to remove a tattoo. And we're not going to use a standard planar track using Mocha Pro, but we're actually going to take a look at using a tool called Vector Paint, or at least some people call it Vector Paint. But basically the idea is we use motion vectors to warp a patch to match the rest of the shot. Now this shot isn't perfect by any means, there's a bunch of roto and cleanup that would still need to be done to call this a final but it's a good indication of how this technique can work. And what's great about it is that we can do it inside of standard Fusion without having to buy any additional plugins like Mocha Pro. Let's take a look. First thing we're going to do is drag in our footage, and you can do that inside of Fusion just by dragging straight in from the Finder or the Explorer on Windows. And let's go to the Frame Format and Preferences and set up this is uh, 720p footage. It's not the best footage on the planet uh, in terms of quality. It's H.264 that we've downloaded from the web, but it will do in a pinch to show this technique. We'll also make sure our LUT is set up, and we're going to work in linear space, so a source is linear and an output space of sRGB to match our monitor, and now we should be good to go. So the first thing I'm going to do here is crop the footage. And the reason I want to do that is to limit the amount of extraneous information that the motion vector analysis has to deal with so it's not going to get confused by parts of the frame that we don't care about. So I'll actually trim this down to 250 by 350 because that worked earlier. And I'm just going to try and line this up so the tattoo at screen right there, the, the kitty that we're trying to remove, should remain clearly in frame at all times, but the other elements can be cropped out. Now once we're confident that the cat is nicely inside of the frame at all times, we'll move on to the next step, adding an uncrop. All this is, is it's going to reverse the repositioning that the first crop did. So we're going to copy the X offset and Y offset, but negate them by adding a minus sign in front. And that will just reposition the footage so it lines up exactly in the same space as the original source. First thing we need to do is identify a good frame to create a clean plate. Now early on, there's a little too much contrast from the lighting, but if we come here to around frame 30 to 35, you'll see that the lighting's a little more even. And in fact, if I just step through, I can see that frame 33, there's very little movement, so there'll be almost no motion blur, and the cat is pretty much in focus here. So it's a good frame to choose as a clean plate. So I'll actually type a note here, and I'll just call the note reference frame 33, so we'll always know that that's the frame that we're using as a reference. I'll reach for the STX Patch Pal node, which is one of the nodes installed with the STX Suite in Reactor. Watch our video on installing plugins with Reactor if you're not sure how to do that. We'll set the reference frame to frame 33, our reference frame, and we're gonna set the output to stabilize background. And what that should do is it should cause the cat not to move. It should stretch it back out to match where it was at frame 33 at every subsequent frame. Now if we see a drift or a rippling or any kind of change, we know that something went wrong with the track. And in fact, if you watch, you'll see that we do have a problem. Every now and then we get this hiccup where the frame jumps. There's obviously too much going on in the frame uh, that's confusing the motion vector tracker. So to help it out, I'm just gonna add a regular tracker node just above all of this and I'm going to track the center of the back. We, sh we have this convenient diamond tracking marker here. And I will go ahead and use that just to track through and I'll set it to uh, update if below a reference tolerance just to make it sure it's smooth going. I'll track back from frame 33 to the beginning and then I will track from frame 33 all the way to the end. and all is well. So now we have some tracking data that we can use to stabilize the initial shot. And the way we do that is we'll go to frame 33, switch over to the operation tab. In the match move settings, we're gonna set the reference type to select time. So we will actually use frame 33 as the reference frame. We're gonna set it to match move with background only so that it stabilizes the footage. And we only wanna stabilize position, not rotation and scale to minimize subpixel softening. And you'll see now that it's nicely stabilized around that diamond, and that should help our 
motion vector tool, it won't have to work as hard to actually figure out where the motion vectors are moving. So let's try running that again. I'm going to purge cache real quick. It's always a good idea in Fusion uh, every now and then to purge the cache in case something gets corrupted and it will make sure everything runs smoothly. And again, we'll start at frame 33 and I'm going to track forward and let's have a look. For the most part, the cat seems to be staying stable and in position. But after not too long, things just start to go squirrely. And we can understand why the hair is moving over towards the top of the cat's head and it doesn't know what to do with those motion vectors. It gets confused and ends up just going completely off the rails in terms of distorting the cat and other elements around. So what we can do is we can help this even more by rotoscoping the rough area around the cat that we want to replace and then masking the footage off so that the motion vector tool, this patch pal, is really only tracking that section and ignoring what's going on with the rest of the hair and the other detail. And that will help it be a little bit more specific in terms of how it distorts the footage. So we'll create a polygon tool at frame 33 and we're going to draw an outline around the cat. Just make some slight adjustments to give it a little bit more room. And now we'll just make adjustments up and down the timeline if there's any drift in the position of the cat's roto. Now we don't have to worry too much because we can use the stabilized version of the footage. You'll see I've selected the uncropped footage so we already have the stabilizer working for us as we adjust the shape of the roto. Once we're happy with the position of the shape across time, we're going to add a mat control node and feed that in as an alpha channel to the main footage. And you'll see I've automatically set this node to combine alpha whenever I add it. I just need to post multiply the image to pre multiply the image. And I'll actually expand the footage. I'm doing it in the wrong place here. Let me reset that. I'll go back to the polygon node itself. And I'm going to expand the border width so that it's actually covering a much larger area. We want to get some of the hair in, a little bit more detail, and that should be just enough additional information to track and know what's happening with the cat, but not so much that it gets confused by everything else going on in the frame and overrides the motion vectors in this area. So let's take a look at how this works. You'll see this time the cat lasts a lot longer before it goes too squirrely with the distortion. I actually want to improve this a little bit. I think I'm going to shrink down the expansion of that polygon just a touch. I think that's going to help it even more. Let's give that a shot. There we go. And let's try with just that much. And it works a whole lot better. Obviously, when she starts turning completely on a profile, it starts to lose it, especially when that hair is going over the top. So that doesn't surprise us, but it should actually give us quite a lot to work with for the bulk of the shot. Time to create the clean plate. So we'll add a paint node, and we'll select it, go to the single stroke tool, not the multi-stroke, because we want to do a cumulative build on one single frame. Now we'll select the clone tool, which oddly enough has the same icon as the multi-stroke tool at the top of the viewer. I don't know why, that's just the way they've done it. And we'll start cloning away with a Wacom tablet. I would strongly encourage you for this kind of work to use a Wacom tablet so you have pressure sensitivity. And we'll start cloning away. Of course, you could be doing this in Photoshop and that may be easier. You can have access then to heal tools and all those kinds of things. Just remember if you are going to Photoshop to make sure that you don't mess up the color space on the way through. So that's not looking too bad, although that general area of the shoulder blade is looking a little too bright. So I'm going to add a color corrector and then mask it off with a polygon tool just to darken that one little section. And I'll make the polygon node, the roto, a little fuzzy around the edges so there's some nice fall off and we should get a nice general color correction there. Now this is great, but of course if we go to another frame 
it's not going to hold. All our paintwork was done stroking on frame 33. So when we go to another frame, that all gets messed up. Easy solution is to add a time stretcher node. Right click on source time and remove the time stretcher source time curve. And then set the source time to frame 33. That will freeze frame everything at frame 33 from then on. I'll drag select through all of that, add an underlay just to specify this is my clean plate. I'll rename the underlay to frame 33 clean plate. And now it's time to add the clean plate to the patch pal. So we'll apply it to the other input of the patch pal, the patch to warp, and we're going to select the output to warped patch. And that's it. Well, kind of. Now you can actually see the motion vectors deforming our patch over time. But we don't want the whole clean plate. We just want the part where the kitty tattoo was. So we'll add a mat control and use the same polygon node we used earlier to mask off that area. And it should already be set up. We just need to post multiply the image. And you'll see that it's kidney bean shaped because remember we expanded it to give the tracker more information. We don't want that. So we'll actually copy and paste the polygon node and adjust that. So our pasted version of it, we'll feed that in as the replacement alpha instead. Foreground there. And now inside of the polygon node, we'll go ahead and bring the border width back down and we'll just play with the soft edge to give some softening blend in there. Now to merge this over the original source plate, we'll do uh, the kissing technique where we drag the output of the foreground patch onto the output of the original source plate and then we'll automatically add a merge. And you can see it's not a bad job so far. The color's a little off, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Let's just play with the border width to give a little bit more of a blend and an adjustment. This is temporary. We'll come back later and fine tune this with a proper mat. Not bad. Let's play and have a look. Something's wrong. Well, of course, we stabilized the footage to help the motion vector tool. And we don't have that stabilization factored into our clean plate. So we'll make a copy of that tracker node that's doing the stabilizing. And we will do the trick where we put the background and the foreground into both inputs. And that allows us to select foreground only, which is the match moved area. And that should magically match move our clean plate to the background footage. Now let's take a look. Not bad. Certainly for the first 33 frames and we go forward uh, it's actually tracking pretty well. Now, as it goes on, she starts to look pretty bruised. And that's because the lighting has changed in the source plate, but our clean plate, of course, is frozen in time at frame 33. So the next thing we need to do is come up with a way of matching the lighting. And that's what we'll do next. Now this next little bit may look like voodoo science, but just hang in there. It's actually not that hard. Steps are simple. Now we'll do a little bit of housekeeping, add some elbows just to move the pipe out of the way. First thing we're going to do is add a mat control to the original source plate. So this is the source plate untouched by anything. We're going to add the same mask to that image as well. So right now that just isolates the kitty, which we don't want. We want to reverse that. So in the mat control, we'll click invert mat post multiply the image and what we can do now is use another tool that we grabbed from reactor and that is the extend edges tool and that will extend the edges from the outside and basically do a quick and dirty cover up of the tattoo now it's not going to convince anyone but what it is going to do is give the general lighting of the shot if there had been no tattoo now here's what we do we blur this pretend clean plate where we've basically folded in the edge pixels to create the values. And what we want to do is blur the footage out until there's no localized detail. And this is just going to be the general sense of the lighting 
without any specific details of the footage. Then we'll copy and control shift V to paste a cloned copy of that exact same blur and apply it to our clean plate. If I can find the right node, here it is. This is after it's all been match moved. So now I have a blurred version of my clean plate, a blurred version of the original footage. And if I divide one by the other, I'll end up with the difference between the two. So I'll add a channel booleans node. Let's just get this old merge out of the way for now. I'm going to divide between the two blurs. So I set the channel booleans to divide. Now I always forget which way is which. So you can press Control T or Command T to flip the inputs. And I usually find the one that looks the widest is probably the most correct. So this one looks right. We have a nice kind of white patch there where the skin is different. Now we add another channel booleans and we take the result of this blurred version that has the basic lighting differences and we multiply that back against the original clean plate. And what that should do, once we've changed the operation to multiply, should now apply the correct lighting changes to our clean plate. Uh, notice that the mat got messed up on the way through the channel booleans. So we'll just, for convenience sake, add another mat control, take the original alpha mat and copy it back in using the mat control node. And then we can post multiply it. And there we have our final patch. And now let's just go ahead and tidy this area up with another underlay so that we know this is the area that's doing the color match. I'll play with extend edges and the blur there just to uh, try and dial this in a little bit better. This is a little bit of trial and error based on the shot. Now, most of the rest of this is about dialing in those two mats, the mat for the actual original analysis, but more importantly, this one for the clean plate so that it doesn't reveal the cat tattoo at any frames, that it doesn't override any of the other footage, like some of the other tattoos or the hairline, and also so that it blends well with the rest of the skin. And when we get to this section where the back is really turning into the corner, we'll need to keyframe the shape to make sure that the rotor lines hug the edge of the skin as it goes towards the end of the sequence. Okay, so things are looking pretty good, although it's a little smooth. We've lost a lot of skin texture just in all of the painting and the distortion. So we'll just add a sharpen tool and even a default bit of sharpening should be enough just to add back some skin presence. You can dial that in as needed. There's a lot of compression artifact from this footage being MP4 anyway, so it's not really going to show up well. But we could play with that and add back some of the gritty skin texture simply by a little bit of sharpening. You can see the difference. All right, things are looking a whole lot better, but right at the end here, everything starts to fall apart. And that's because our patch really, there's only so much it can do when we turn the corner here. Uh, so one quick trick we can do is simply to rotor back everything past that dark dress strap and down the arm. So we'll create another polygon tool and we'll rotor that. Again, looking at the stabilized footage. We'll just use that for the entire section towards the end of the frame where our vector paint tool, the patch pal, starts to get confused. Once that road is all done, we will add a tracker node, the same tracker node, to the polygon. Make sure it's set to match move, which it is, because we copied the one we'd already set to match move previously. And now we will grab a map control, take a copy of the original source footage, 
and we will apply our roto as the mat for that piece of footage. Post multiply the image or pre molt it. And then we just have that section of the arm to paste over the final shot. Make sure our Mac control is wired up. And merge that over the current final using the KISS method. Now we have to jump back to frame 33. There's the current final. Now we'll add in our new arm. And we want to dissolve this on over a few frames. So at frame 94, I'll set the blend to 0. And then I'll go up to frame 106. Select the merge again and set the blend to 1. So it's going to animate on. And we can now take a look. We'll go back to frame 33 and play through and watch the result. And that's looking much, much better, although there's still some weirdness at the end. And that's because where the hair runs over the top of the cat, the vector paint got confused, didn't know what to do. And so we're kind of stuck with that. Now, what I would normally do is jump into Mocha Pro and just track that last section in, because Mocha would be great at tracking the cat and then applying the last good frame as a clean plate across the rest of the footage. But seeing as we're trying to do everything without Mocha Pro here, I'll just quickly try and do some frame by frame painting just to clean this up, which is almost never a good idea because you'll end up with some kind of flickering. But just in the interest of time and trying to finish the shot without delving into a whole other technique or using Mocha, let me try and paint it. Again, I'm just using the clone tool, but I'm cloning frame by frame, trying to do roughly the same kind of paint at each frame to avoid flickering. So there you have it, the end result of my paint work, not perfect. This could certainly do with a lot of love. Some of the roto at the end isn't tight. There are all kinds of things that just need to be tweaked up. The hair needs to be kind of uh, rotoed or painted back in a little bit. But those are all the finessing details that quite frankly would take an hour or two to cover. So we're gonna conveniently pretend they don't exist. But hopefully that's enough to give you an idea of how to do a nice little tattoo removal without having to resort to an expensive license of Mocha Pro and using this nice free tool Patch Pal and a couple of channel bullions nodes on the way through. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have an impossible shot you want us to cover, feel free to mail us and we'll see you next time.